Hi guys, Paul here, and this is going to be a quick run through on the F303 board. This is the X Racer from FPVmodel.com. Uh, I've had a number of questions since the last video in reference to how do you go about actually flashing the firmware because some people are having issues with it. Uh, FPV models have done a video on flashing the firmware. I will have a link in the description for that video, but I'll also run through exactly the way I set it up and go through some of the settings as far as uh, getting um, SBUS running on this board. Now I'll be doing this video on a MacBook. Obviously you can use a PC, it doesn't really matter. The process is pretty much identical. The first thing you'll need to do is actually get a hold of the firmware and I'm going to be using Betaflight in this one. And you can do a search for Betaflight or you can actually, um, you can go to the RC Groups thread or do a Google search for it. Uh, go to the GitHub, this is Boris B's GitHub and it'll have all the various versions including what changes uh, have been implemented in each version. Obviously pick something that's stable and that's what you want to actually go with. As far as the hex file to download, the hex file you're going to be after is the SP Racing F3 uh, hex. So make sure you download the correct uh, hex file and that should download fine. And that should be done. And mine is on my desktop, so that's pretty much good to go. The only other thing you'll need to do is make sure you have the correct driver. This is the correct uh, Scilabs driver. Um, I'm assuming most people will actually have that, but if you don't, do a search for it, and this is essentially where you find it. Um, and make sure you download the appropriate one. Uh, and that'll depend on what version of Windows you're using, or um, Mac OS, etc. Next thing you'll want to do is plug in your micro USB into your flight controller and uh, carefully plug that guy in there. And what you want to do is actually hold down the bootloader button. And while holding that button down, you want to actually plug it into your PC. And what should happen is you should get a solid blue LED light. And if you've done that, that means it's in bootloader mode ready to go for you. Next thing you want to do is actually run clean flight. And once you've got clean flight running, go to the firmware tab and make sure you have the same switches selected here as I have these three. And make sure you've set this to manual and select the correct board rate. Next thing you want to do is actually load the actual firmware. So we're going to go with this file that we just downloaded and click on flash firmware. And as you can see, it's flashing here in real time. The blue light will stay lit until it's actually finished flashing. And then what you should see is uh, the little red light begin to flash. And we should get a notification that it was successfully flashed. There you go, and we're pretty much good to go. So the board's ready to go. All we need to do is actually set the appropriate settings. Most of you guys are going to be using SBUS anyway with this board. So we'll just run through some of the settings. Um, okay, UART3, you want to change that. And next tab, uh, you want to set your settings as per whatever it is that you have on your uh, ESCs. Uh, these are the settings that I'll be running with on this board. And uh, select serial here. That's good. Uh, everything else looks fine. Uh, wait a sec. Uh, we need to select SBUS here. And the rest of it looks pretty much fine. And we hit the save. And the next tab, uh, that's fine. PIDs, they're okay. You can change those to whatever it is that you want. And over here, what I'll do is actually select ARM, and I'll also select Air Mode. Uh, essentially, the way we have our quad set up, uh, once you actually arm it, and the prop starts spinning, uh, air mode is automatically enabled. There are pros and cons. Uh, some people run air mode on a separate switch. You can do that too. But for simplicity, this is the way we run ours. I think in the early days, there were some issues with air mode. So hence, people had it set up so they could actually disengage air mode. Um, so that's up to you the way you want to actually set that up. And hit save. And what we've done on the radio is we've set it up uh, with two switches. We're using the slider. And we've got to move that to the middle position, not the top or the bottom. It's got to be in the middle position. 
and then uh, that's armed. Once we flick this switch, that basically means the props will actually start spinning. So that's why we've got our setup. And obviously, if you switch any one of those switches off or the slider, it will actually disarm the quad and uh, you'll have to go through the arming process again. So that's the way we've actually got our setup. This is pretty much the same uh, as what uh, Final God was using on his setup. Uh, this is in the early days when he was running with his idle up. Air mode obviously wasn't available. Um, he was running his idle up and that worked really quite well. But now with air mode, we're using pretty much the same sort of system. Obviously the quad's a lot more locked in and flies a lot nicer. Uh, if you want me to run through the settings on the radio, I can do that too, but I think that's pretty easy to set up. Anyway, look, I'll leave the video at that and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks very much for taking time to watch this video.